Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast with your host, the Creepy Fox. Today, join me for some true scary stories that are sure to chill you to the bone. Today's episode features some older stories that come to us from a year ago, two years, and even three years ago. So if you're one of those subscribers that sent in those stories, sorry it took so long, but hey, better late than never. So make sure to sit back, relax, grab yourself some snacks, and let's begin. The summer of 2013. Who doesn't enjoy playing some Call of Duty zombies? Show of hands. Yeah, I'm a huge fan, especially from Black Ops 1 and 2. It was on a Friday since the DLC came out during the week. Now is playing with three other friends. We'll call them Drew, Zach, and Kevin. My mom and dad were still at work, and they'd be getting home a little bit later than usual since they were going to go to Costco to get some groceries done. I do have a sister, but she was hanging out with her boyfriend, meaning it was just me at the house. It's not an issue since I was already 19. At about a quarter past seven, my mom calls me. Hi honey, could you go ahead and set up the table and get some cups out? We're going to get a pizza here from Costco. We should be home by 8 o'clock the latest. My mother more or less said. I told my friends I needed to set something up. So we made a crawler and I waited at the back end of generator number 6. I now head to the kitchen which is just down the hallway and I begin taking out all the utensils. When I opened the trash bin to throw something away, I saw it was full. I knew my parents would call me lazy if I didn't take out the trash. Therefore, I tie up the top and I walk to the side of the house to throw everything away. As I make my way back through the side gate door, I see a piece of paper had fallen out of the trash bag. I go to reach for it, and then all of a sudden, I hear the gate open. Hey, you guys are back? Before I could finish my sentence, I'm staring face to face with this disheveled looking homeless man. At least I assumed he was, due to his tattered clothing. He was tall, about six foot two, and was very skinny. He kind of reminded me of those junkies you see hanging out around liquor stores. He had thin long hair, his eyes were red as if he had just finished smoking something, and I didn't notice he was acting quite bizarre, as in shaking, almost paranoid. Hello there, I think you might have the wrong home there buddy, I told him with a nervous smile, beginning to walk back to my door. Hey, do you have any drink in your refrigerator? Excuse me? Are you talking about beer? I responded back, getting this sudden feeling in my head that told me to run. Just don't ask. Yeah, do you have anything on you? Please, I'll give you some money. Nah, dude, we don't have anything like that here. I think you need to leave. I was now inside my kitchen and double locked the door. I watched as the man stumbled in my backyard before I could see him head to one of the windows. I followed him over there. And when I see him for the second time, I'm in shock. He is cutting up the window screen with a box cutter. Dude, I told you, you need to get out of here. What's your problem? He started to curse and call me by all these different obscenities, saying he was going to come into my house and cut me up. No way was I going to let that happen. I take out my cell phone and start dialing for the police. While on the line with the dispatch, I see through the same window a neighbor on the other side of the fence telling the guy he needs to leave. My neighbor, who we'll call Joseph, is this really old school and tough guy who might seem like a jerk on the outside, but he's a huge teddy bear when you get to know him. I pretty much consider him like an uncle. Joseph saw me through the window talking on the phone, and I think he got a general idea of who I was talking to. A minute later, Joseph and his brother, who had just so happened to have been visiting, managed to disarm the man and keep him detained until police got there to question him. I saw this all from the safety of my living room, by the way. Turns out the guy was high, as they found a little baggie on him, and even a glass pipe. My parents actually got home just as the man was put behind the police cruiser. Imagine their shock when they saw the scene. My mom immediately runs over to me, and gives me one of the hugest and tightest hugs she'd ever given. By the way, in case you're wondering, my phone was full of text messages from my Xbox buddies, letting me know the next round it accidentally started, and we all got wrecked, as us gamers like to call it. I did enjoy some amazing pizza afterwards, 
and we spent the rest of that evening playing Call of Duty, putting the scary encounter behind me. I now live a couple of cities over, and I'm engaged to my soon-to-be wife, with a baby boy on the way. Almost car mugged at gas station. Just finished listening to your video you did on scary gas station stories, and it's a shame I didn't find it earlier. I have my own frightening tale that happened to me and my father around 2003. I was 16 at the time. We were going to visit my grandma, who unfortunately had fallen ill. She lived in North Dakota. Meanwhile, my father and I lived in South Dakota. A quick side note here. We are originally from North Dakota, but my father and I moved south due to him having a better job opportunity. That's not really important to this story, other than explaining where we were traveling from. In total, it would be about eight hours to the hospital, and it would see us driving on some pretty lonely and quiet highways. I just picked up Pokemon Sapphire a couple of days before the road trip, and I was busy leveling up my team as my father took care of the driving. Along the way, we made a couple of stops. First off at a Wendy's to pick up a couple of hamburgers and french fries. I'm not sure if it's just me. But anyone else agree that fast food on a road trip is way more delicious than when you're picking it up at your local store? I digress. When we were about two hours from the hospital, we had stopped at a rest area that had a gas station since we needed to use the restroom. I went in first since this was a one-person restroom. Once I'm done, my father heads in. Meanwhile, I pick out some Cheetos and a couple of sodas for my dad and I to enjoy on the final trek of the trip. I do recall this little shop having these strange little knickknacks that could give anybody a run for their money. My dad, as per usual, was taking way longer than expected in the restroom. That's why I told him I would wait in the car since it was a pretty chill 65 degrees and I wanted to get back to playing. Once in the passenger seat, I turned on my Game Boy Advance and I continued battling and capturing Pokemon. I lost track of time because I was so focused on the screen that when I heard knocking on the window, I was startled and actually let out a sudden gasp. Expecting to see my father, I was left pondering when standing at the passenger door is a random man. Now, I've never been the greatest with details, so I'll just describe him to the best of my ability. He wore a hoodie with the hood over his face. He had a baggy blue jeans and I could see a scruffy beard and long hair falling over his chest. I gave him an awkward wave and hello as I looked over to see if the doors were locked. They were, and a small breath of relief comes over me. Hey kid, do you have any money on you? I can hear him say through the glass window. I told him I had none, expecting him to leave and go ask somebody else, but instead, he's still there. Ten seconds of this awkward staring, he reaches for the door handle and starts to violently shake it. Come on, Dad, where the heck are you? I started screaming in my head as this man does the unthinkable. He reaches into his jacket as he looks back and forth, almost as if he's checking to see if somebody is watching him. Then, the guy takes out this little revolver. Panic is ensuing, and I can feel my heart begin to beat out of my chest. If you don't have any money, then I'll take the car instead. Now get out. I sat there for what felt like an eternity, thinking this had to be some really bad prank. Please just let it be so. The man shouted at me again, this time expressing even more frustration. I was so terrified, thinking he would shoot into the glass, which is why I did as he said, and I got out, but on the driver's side. I was just hoping he would take the vehicle and leave. So I drop my Game Boy Advance, crawl over to the driver's seat, and then I book it. My father was just stepping out of the convenience store, and I yelled to him there was a man trying to take our car. My father, bless his heart, being a former Marine who conceal carries, runs over to our vehicle and then takes out his pistol, demanding the man to get out. The man who had placed the revolver on the driver's seat, that detail was later explained to me by my father, had no time to react. So the man puts his hands up and steps out of the vehicle. And then, the man makes a run for it and heads across the highway. I was already inside the gas station convenience store telling the clerk to call authorities as we didn't have a cell phone. Officers got to the location roughly 20 minutes later 
and the officers took our statements, as well as began a search. We left a short time later, and we made it to the hospital. Thankfully, my grandma made a full recovery, and she went to live a happy life until her passing in 2013. To this day, some 15 plus years later, we aren't sure whether or not the man was even caught or arrested. I'm sure they were able to look up the serial number on the revolver, and they most likely matched it with the owner. Chased away with hammer. I hope you're doing well. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for your videos. I've been enjoying your narrations for over a year now. I don't know why, but listening to creepy stories is just my way to relax after a long day. Luckily, I haven't had a lot of creepy encounters or things like that happening to me in real life, so this will be the first time I'm sending a story to the creepy fox. This happened just today, and I'm still quite shocked, so I feel I really need to share this with someone. For some background, I'm a 30-year-old female, and I live in Poland and spend quite a lot of my free time traveling and cycling. I have some experience in solo trips, as I've traveled to many countries in Europe and cycled around Poland mostly on my own. However, I'm rather a city girl. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy spending time in nature, but I usually don't wander very far from the urban areas, because being in the middle of nowhere, especially alone, makes me quite anxious. Anyways, my overall experience with traveling and cycling has been very positive so far. I've had a lot of unforgettable adventures, and I've met some really lovely people. This summer, due to the current worldwide circumstances, I decided to stay in my country and just explore some new areas. I recently bought a new trekking bike, and I was really excited to try it out. I've had a few really great trips by the seaside, as well as in my city. I live in one of the largest cities in Poland. For privacy reasons, I won't share my exact location, but it is also surrounded by beautiful nature, forests, rivers, mountains, and countryside. Today I decided to go a little further than usual and explore a new area outside the city. I crossed some really picturesque places, meadows, rivers, forests, fields, and I finally got to a nice bike trail that led to the countryside. I rode there for a while, passing by a few villages until I saw a meadow with cows next to a bridge. I decided to stop there for a moment drink some water and check my location on an app on my phone. Please keep in mind that I was still staying on the bike trail and there were other people going by every now and then. After a few minutes, I noticed an elderly woman standing on the other side of the trail and staring at me. At first, I didn't pay much attention to her, although she was starting to make me feel a little uncomfortable. She looked really old, like she was 100 years old. She was wearing some old rugged clothes and had an unpleasant expression on her face. But still, I assumed it was just one of those elderly ladies who don't have much to do, so they just like to stare disapproving at younger people. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people like that where I live. Once I pulled out my phone to check my exact location, I heard the woman shout something like, Go away. Get the heck out of here. Of course, she was shouting in Polish, and it's hard to even translate exactly what she said, as such expressions don't even exist in English. Let's just say that she said it in a very rude way that would suggest she was talking to a dog or other animal, so that's what I assumed. There were also the cows in the meadow on the other side of the trail, so I thought she was talking to them, or maybe some other animal that was bothering her. And when I looked around, I didn't see any other animals. The woman started to approach me, still staring at me with an angry expression, but now I can see she was holding a big hammer in her hand. Get the heck out of here with that cell phone, she shouted, and now it was clear. She was talking to me. I was really shocked and speechless for a moment. Seeing that she started to shout the same obscenities in broken German, she probably assumed I was German and I didn't understand her. Excuse me? I just asked this time getting more angry than scared or shocked. Leave me alone, or I'll use my cell phone to call the police, I shouted to this nutcase as I was getting away from her on my bicycle. I was riding quite fast and wearing a helmet, like I always do. However, I have never thought that I would need to protect myself from crazy old people. 
Anyway, I wasn't really scared anymore at this point because I didn't think that this old and overweight woman would run or throw her hammer far enough to reach me. And besides, there were other people passing by, so I didn't think she would try anything in front of them. I just got really angry. I was, after all, on a public bicycle trail, not on her private property, and she had no right to speak to me like that, let alone chase me with a hammer. I suppose that she was one of those poorly educated folks who really believe that cell phones or any kind of technology can harm them, their crops, animals, or whatever. I had met some crazy people before, but nothing like that ever happened to me before, and I hope it'll never happen again. I didn't have much choice, and I had to go back the same way in order to return to the city, but luckily this time there was no trace of the old woman. And before you ask, yes, I reported this to the police later and I gave them the location where it happened. I don't know what was wrong with her, and I don't want this to happen to anyone else who passes by, just because they use their phone. So crazy lady, I hope the police will send someone to check up on you soon. Arriving with Backup This happened just last year. My girlfriend Tiana and I were camping in Alabama. This was only the second time we'd gone camping. The previous occurrence saw us staying near some campgrounds along with other families. This time we wanted more privacy, since that camping trip was full of annoying kids. So we got into our RV camper one early August morning, and we drove about 25 miles from the city limits, off the main road, and into a forest. We stopped next to a little pond, and we proceeded to spend the rest of the day setting up a little tent, and I was teaching my girlfriend all about survival tactics. I've always considered myself an avid explorer, and Bear Grylls is one of my main idols. I learned so much from watching his shows and reading his books, and I swear I have a pretty good impression of his voice. At any rate, around 6.45pm, we were busy cooking some steaks we had brought, my girlfriend was inside the RV using the restroom. Meanwhile, I was the one cooking. Out of nowhere, I heard a deep man's voice say something from the tree line. I perked up and focused my attention to see a scruffy man with an axe who had this really confused look across his face. Hello there, good evening sir. What did you need? I asked him, putting my hand onto my waist, where I have a concealed 9mm on my belt. Oh, nothing, just walking around. I saw some smoke. You need anything? I told him I was fine, and he gives me an indication as if saying he's about to leave. But then Tiana steps out of the RV, and I see his expression change. It goes from, meh, whatever, to ooh, what do we have here? Hello there, beautiful. How are you? Wait, are you two married? A quick tangent here. I proposed to Tiana just a few weeks later, and she said yes. Thank you for the compliment, sir. Yeah, we are. What about it? Oh, nothing really. You're just really a lucky kid. She's very beautiful. I said thank you before he takes off, but not before he looks at Tiana. What was that all about? Who was he? Tiana asked, handing me a Bud Light and then taking his seat on her foldable chair. I don't know, he just popped out of nowhere and said he saw our camp. Probably just some random backpacker. We forgot about him pretty quickly and moved on with our evening. At this point in the story, I would say unfortunately. But this next part did turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Us not really focusing on the weather forecast, we were caught off guard when we were hit with a sudden rain slash windstorm. Talk about a perfect evening being ruined. We were already out here, so it's not like we were really feeling like having to drive back home. Therefore, we chose to head into the RV and fell asleep watching some movies on my MacBook. I don't remember the exact time, but I want to estimate maybe 2 or 3 a.m. I began to hear what sounds like footsteps on puddles. The heavy rain had turned into a light sprinkle, and I could still hear a little bit of the howl coming from the winds. I focused my attention on the noises. I could distinctly remember hearing someone coughing. Now just imagine this for a brief moment. Imagine you're in the middle of the woods, and you hear what sounds like someone possibly stalking your campsite. Yes, I was armed, but that didn't explain the sudden chills. 
Deciding to take matters into my own hands, I grab my 9mm from the desk and then I peek out through the curtains. What I saw was very bizarre. Remember that man I talked about a bit earlier in my story? The one who said he saw my campfire? Well, with the glow of the moonlight, I can just make him out alongside another man who looked almost identical to him, minus the beer belly. As I watched them, I saw both of them reveal some knives as they start to attack the wheels on the RV. Oh, I can't even tell you how mad I was at that. I head toward the front door so that I could confront them, and I feel the door handle begin to violently shake as I put my hand onto it. It's at this point in the story, I didn't care if I woke up my girlfriend, since I wasn't trying to spook her. Using the most intimidating voice I could muster, I tell the men, Whatever you two are planning, your best option is to leave. I'm armed, and I'm not afraid to take you two out. Just try me. Things went silent, and the doorknob stopped shaking. I heard the men whispering, but I was unable to make out what was said. After what seemed like forever, I hear their footsteps grow distant, and I get visual confirmation of their departure by seeing them walk away through the window. A sense of relief came over me, but that would be interrupted when I thought about the wheels. Surely, if they were slashed, we would be stuck out here, and those two might come back armed with their own guns. My girlfriend, who was already awake freaking out, tells me it was best that we leave. I wasn't complaining. I hopped into the driver's seat and we drove for about 15 minutes until we had to stop at the side of the road. This was where I would finally see the damage these guys had caused. Two flat tires. Thankfully, a quick call to a towing company saw me and my girlfriend being picked up and driven back into town. In case you're wondering, we did report the incident to authorities. Both those two, as far as we know, are still out there somewhere. They were planning something. In continuation with featuring older story submissions on the creepy fox that have been submitted to me throughout the years, I give you another one of these stories I have yet to feature, sent to me from a subscriber on March 25th. 2019. If she's still listening to this channel, I say hello, and thank you for being truly amazing. Here's how her story goes. This evening, something happened to me that really shook me up. It acts as a learning experience that I truly hope no one ever has to go through firsthand. My mother, my sister, and I oftentimes will go to the casino with a budget of roughly $20 each to play on the slot machines. This is in combination with french fries and other little snacks. We'll play for a little while just to be out of the house, and then we go home. Very basic family bonding time. Well, one day after work, we decided we would go to the casino late Sunday evening, as that's when it's pretty empty. The normal crowd of young adults is instead replaced with the elderly, usually retired or very calm and sweet. Not the kind of individuals you would expect to give you a run for your money. Pardon the pun. So we get to the casino and my sister and I begin to walk around. Eventually, my mother finds a slot machine to her liking and I take a machine close by as my sister chooses another. After a few minutes, I start hitting some of the little jackpots and of course that begins to grab people's attention. It's not an issue really, but I began to feel eyes on me. When I turn my attention to my side, I see a man and a woman staring not at the machine, but directly at me. Weird, but whatever. I continue to play, blaming my over-imagination on my paranoia. Another few minutes, I can still feel this stare that is making me quite uncomfortable. I start playing with the idea that maybe they want to use my machine. So I print out my voucher and get up so that I could find another slot machine. By this point, both my mom and sister have moved to a different part of the casino. You'd think these people would have taken my slot machine, and that would have been the end of my story. However, the two are closely following behind me, which I'm now starting to get some really bad feelings. Don't get me wrong, I don't like to be the judgmental type, since people can be pretty harsh these days. But just being in their presence made me have this impending feeling of doom. Thankfully, I locate my mother and the two following me stop in place close by. Seconds later, they walk toward the table games. 
My mom agreed that them following me was strange, and we find it even worse when we catch them staring at us from a distance. We now begin looking for my sister, disregarding the couple. After a few minutes, we locate my sister playing in a slot machine and catch her up with what's happened. Just like my mother, she finds the situation bizarre. We decided just to stick together. Fast forward a bit later, I've already forgotten about my stalkers. We were busy playing a game together, and I told my mom I would be right back, since I wanted to cash out my voucher. Thankfully, the machine that dispenses the money is close. As I'm selecting the options on the screen, that feeling of being watched returns. Honestly, I wish I could explain it, but it's one of those sensations you have to feel firsthand. Anyways, what I overheard next is what really bothers me, even today. That's her, right? That's the one. Yeah, that's her. How old do you think she is? 22? I should have mentioned at the beginning, but I'm 28 years old. I do sometimes get mistaken for younger, however. I can then begin hearing them talk about my age, my weight, and my height. We gotta get her alone somehow. Let's try grabbing her over there. I overhear. Yeah, these people weren't exactly being sneaky. I'm standing there in disbelief as this machine seems to be taking an eternity. But finally, when my money is dispensed, I grab it and then see the two walk toward me. They pass me seconds after, and then head to the nearby spot I overheard them talking about. Hi there, sweetheart. Come over here for a second. We need to talk to you. I can still remember her saying to me as they looked at each other with ill intent. In that moment, I chose to sneak behind a lady playing a machine, choosing to hide next to her. Where'd she go? I recall hearing the woman say, as they find no success in locating me. I then saw them head toward the front of the casino. At this point, both my mom and sister are looking for me, worried. I was so infuriated that I went to find a security guard and told them there were these two making me feel uncomfortable and were potentially stalking me. The security guard takes me to a back room and I'm surrounded by other guards as I begin to catch them up on the incident. Since this casino has CCTV cameras, they were able to confirm my claims by bringing up footage showing the two strangers following me. The guards are then able to locate the two alive on the cameras. It looked as if they were still searching for me. After a while, the two exit the casino and we begin thinking all is good. So me... My mom and my sister start to leave, but then at a distance, we see the two re-entering the casino. We quickly jump behind another set of machines and I began to think, what sorts of dark intentions are bringing them back to the casino to look for me? We watch them in hiding and we can see them walk toward the area they had last seen me. We take this opportunity to exit the casino and we leave. Now, if there's anything I learned, it's that you need to be aware of your surroundings at all given times, no matter the time or place. My late father always pushed this on me. I know that as I write this out, this might not seem all too bad, but that feeling, which I can't really describe, is something I don't forget. Collecting Leaves Until This happened just last month so it's still fresh in my mind. Just five days ago before writing this, I'd finished an art piece as part of a commission job I had a friend request from me. It was of one of his original anime characters, and he wanted me to place her sitting in a tree and smiling at the camera. He told me I could be as inventive as I wanted, which was why three weeks ago at the end of June, I thought instead of drawing leaves for the tree, I would head to this trail I take my dog on walks for, and pick out some leaves there. The trail starts next to a courthouse with a huge parking lot. When you begin, you go up a small incline. Then about a mile in, you can either head down a hill on your left, or you can continue straight for half a mile, where there is a street. I chose to go down the little hill, as there is a more forested part of this trail that has the sorts of leaves I was looking for. As this was a little later in the evening, since it was mid-80s and I didn't want to get sunburned, the trail was pretty empty, say apart from just a couple of people riding their bicycles. Eventually, I reached this small patch of tall grass, where a bunch of the leaves had fallen from the trees above. One by one, I started to search for the leaves I found acceptable, while listening to some music on my airpods. 
I have the AirPods Pro. I'm not trying to flex, trust me. It's just that these ones have the option where you can hear any noise around you if you set it to the right option. A lot of people don't know about that, which is why I think this person might have thought I hadn't heard them. You see, as I was bending down, I started to hear footsteps at my rear, inching their way closer. I looked up and I see a normal looking man, maybe early 30s with some running shorts and a tank top, and he told me to be careful. I asked him why and he told me there was this really suspicious man walking about a little bit further down the trail where he came from. I thanked him for the warning and he soon leaves. I had some pepper spray on my keychain so I wasn't too worried. Fast forward another 5 minutes and I feel I have enough leaves for my project. I was sitting down on a log and drinking some water from my bottle and looking over my phone and again I heard footsteps. I looked up from my screen and instead of seeing a runner or maybe someone on a bicycle, there's a guy who, just like the runner from earlier explained, was acting very peculiar. Hey there, you're really hot. Want to come back to my place? The man sounded drunk. I immediately stood up and told him I wasn't interested as I began to quicken my pace and I head back toward the hill. Wait, where are you going? Come back, he said as he went into a full-on sprint. Oh, heck no. I wasn't going about to deal with some drunk dude trying to get lucky. I began running, using my background in track and field to my advantage, and I managed to outpace him. I was now at the top of the hill I mentioned before, and I stumbled into a couple of guys on bicycles who were taking a break. They saw me out of breath and sweating, and they started to ask me what was wrong. I pointed toward the bottom of the hill, and when they walked over, they told me. The man saw them, and he immediately booked it back the way he came from. But perhaps what made things even more terrifying was what the men on the bicycles told me. I can't believe he was chasing you with a knife. I went cold. I saw no knife, but I knew these guys weren't lying just to make up a story. Therefore, we called the police and told them there was a man with a knife walking around the trail who appeared to be intoxicated. Thanks to my dad's friend, who works for the police station, we found out that the man on the trail was later caught. He had been drinking that afternoon, and I guess he had just had a pretty bad fight with his girlfriend. Why he decided to have a knife on him, who knows. But I'm happy that's one less bad guy on the streets. Or I guess I should say, trails. Their plan to take me. Before I begin my story, I want to let you all know I was in my early 20s when this occurred. Now let me start. I have a pretty creepy story I'd like to share here on the Creepy Fox that I hope acts as a learning lesson. Even if it seems all is calm, you should never be distracted. It's unfortunate it has to be that way, but you'll thank yourself in the end. This was roughly around 2005 or 2006, and I was just getting out of work. While on the way to pick up some Carl's Jr., I got a call from my mom. She asked me if I could stop by the grocery store to pick up a few items. Things like milk, bread, eggs, etc. I told her sure as I grabbed my order and started to make the 30 minute drive there. Halfway I realized there was a new grocery store that had just opened not too far from where I currently was. I figured most grand openings have major deals so why not try it out. I did a U-turn at the street light I was waiting at, and then I drove about three minutes into a shopping center with the store. It was huge, and I was correct. They did have a major sell. So I grabbed the items my mom had requested, but then I sort of got carried away with some more groceries. Surely this basket was starting to get kind of heavy. Therefore, I leave my things with one of the friendly cashiers as I go outside to grab a shopping cart. The carts were at the side of the building, where there was only one light source, which came from above the building. I guess I should have mentioned this was around 7.45pm, when it was dark. When I grabbed my cart, a man approached me and tried to initiate a conversation. He was average height and average build, wearing a large Dodgers baseball t-shirt, some baggy jeans, and had a Dodgers hat to match his shirt, and was I'd say, early 40s. 
I don't remember the exact things he said, but I do remember him complimenting me. I thanked him as I start to walk away, but I remember he stops me and he asks if I could give him my phone number. I didn't say anything. I just showed him my hand and pointed to the engagement ring I was wearing. He let out an, oh, I see, before he just walked away. Fast forward roughly 15 minutes later, I've already paid and I'm starting to head back to my car, which was a bit of a ways at the back end of the parking. Once done placing everything in the back seat, I went to put the shopping cart back where I had originally got it from. I used to work at a Ralph's grocery store a year prior to this incident. I know how annoying it is to deal with customers who just leave their carts scattered across the parking. That's why I wanted to do this grocery store a favor. Here's when things got pretty creepy. I placed my shopping cart in the little waiting area, and then I began heading back to my vehicle. Out of nowhere, an unmarked van with its windows tinted stops in front of me, near my car. Quite annoying, but it would be the least of my concerns. Suddenly, the window is rolled down, and I see the man who had the Dodgers hat behind the wheel. The back door opens, and a man who looked to be sporting some sort of blade told me to get in. That wasn't going to happen. I tell them no, and then make a run back to the grocery store. Thank goodness there is a security guard who I was able to wave down. By the time I looked back to the parking area, I could see the unmarked van beginning to exit the parking. The security guard was pretty confused as I began relaying what I had just gone through. He got the manager, and then I stayed with him until the police arrived. I gave them all the information I could remember, and some other customers did the same thing too. The officers ended up escorting me back to my house. Or let's just say, I had trouble sleeping that night. As for the man in the Dodgers t-shirt and that vehicle, I can't really say for sure I know their exact location today. Here's to hoping they have since changed their ways. Edit. I forgot to mention, but this took place in downtown LA. Big Cat of Ashdown Forest Hey there, I enjoy listening to your videos and everyone's stories, especially in the evening. To give you just a tad bit of context, I live in East Sussex, England. When I was younger, oh, I'd say 13 or 14, my parents had purchased this huge piece of land in the Ashdown Forest. It was approximately four acres. My dad is a handyman. He loves to build and construct, and that's why he got planning permission to build a few stables, even a tack room and a barn. We had some horses, and being able to hack away at the forest was excellent. I can still recall as I write this out to all of you how much fun being out with Jellybean was. Jellybean was the name of my horse. Anyways, my dad began setting the foundation with cement for the barn, and when we came back the next day, we were surprised to see something a bit different, if you will. There were these paw prints in the cement. Now this was no average dog, cat, or fox paw prints. These were massive. The pad was the size of the palm of my hand, with claw indents. My dad even told me there had been sightings of big wild cats in the forest, and this is most likely one of them. I was quite worried, since we had horses, and even some chickens. I surely didn't want to go to bed, and then wake up the next day, only to see a bunch of ripped up chickens. One weekend, myself and a few others were down the yard with our dogs. At the time, we had two Jack Russell Terriers, named Disney and Dara. Those dogs were full of energy, and they'd run to the trees like they were kids. I should mention that at the bottom, on the next door neighbor's field, there was a large area of trees. This is where the dogs used to run around in, since our neighbors didn't mind. So we're doing our typical to-do list, checking off different chores, when all of a sudden, Disney was dragging a deer's front leg up the hill with the help of Dara. I'm not sure about you, but that sight alone petrified me. Now I wasn't even feeling safe in the yard. I remember trying to come up with some sort of explanation. Maybe a deer had passed, or maybe a fox had got into it and shredded it apart. Perhaps the dogs just found it and thought it was a bone. But then, an even worse thought. What if 
My dogs had taken this wildcat's dinner. Going further a few months in the story, nothing much else happened, but my dad would mention spotting something in the neighbor's field a couple of times. He describes it as a big cat, being tan in color, almost matching the long grass. One day, we decided to have a gathering with a group of friends. We set up a fire near the bottom of our field, and it was getting dark, so we left the yard lights on. That way, we could see our way back a bit better. We had split the field, so the horses couldn't bother us or go near the fire when it was lit. We were playing games and having fun when I noticed the horses were going a bit mad, running around and snorting, so I went over to check up on them to see if I could calm them down. I walked up the hill and ended up near the top by the yard. The horses were looking down the field at the mesh of trees in the neighboring field. This is where I saw two glinting eyes and I froze for a good two minutes. I didn't know what to do, so I walked slowly down the hill toward the eyes. I don't know what I was thinking when I just stood there staring at them, but I could hear it breathing. I was a meter away from the fence and suddenly I decided to growl at it. I know, very dumb. I continued to growl, when just like that, the big wild cat growled back. Shivers ran down my spine, and the only thought I had was to stay close to the fire. Wild animals don't like fire. The others saw me walking backwards toward them, and they wondered what I was doing. I told them what just happened, and we decided to call it a day. We put the fire out, and we swiftly went home. So that was the time I came face to face with the big cat of Ashdown Forest. Stop and Shop Creep This is an experience from the grocery store. I'm female and was about 16 years old when this happened. I was on summer break and I was staying over at my grandparents' house. So far, that summer had been fairly uneventful. While we were in the kitchen making some morning breakfast, we realized we needed to go to the nearest stop and shop to pick up some groceries. For those who aren't aware, stop and shop is our equivalent of a regular grocery store located in the northern states. Once there, we make our way in and start to grab things like milk and eggs. We then head to the aisle that has the shampoo and conditioner. This is where I saw a man. He was around 50s. He had gray pepperish hair and a scruffy beard. I tried not to mind him as I saw him immediately walk down another aisle, disappearing behind some of the goods. We continue our shopping and eventually stumble into him again, but just like before he walks past us and disappears. I didn't see him again until we head to the aisle where all the bread is located. When he walked past me this time, he gave me a very strange look. It was a half smile his eyes were looking me up and down. I found that very weird, but not enough to notify my grandparents, since I was sure they would have said I was making a big fuss. We soon finish our shopping and head toward the cash register. As we put our food on the counter, awaiting the friendly cashier to scan everything, I was about to tell my grandma that I was going to use the restroom, but then I saw that strange 50-year-old man again. He made his way across to the other cash register on the other side of where we were standing. Then he looked at me and told me to come here with his finger. I got quite paranoid, so I finally told my grandpa. Here's the part that really makes me believe he had some evil intentions. When telling my grandpa and beginning to point toward the man, he walks out really fast. My grandpa gave chase as the cashier was listening to our conversation. He notified the manager and my grandma gave me a hug. Unfortunately, my grandfather was unable to locate the man. The manager came out soon after, and I gave him the Spark Notes version of what just took place before we finally left. To this day, I get a really bad feeling he may have been trying to get me alone. Might seem like a stretch, but it's sadly all too common. Peeking through the window. Here's a story from yesteryear. We were staying at a campground near a large lake. We were the owners of an old 1960s Volkswagen van camper. It's the kind that has a dinette in the back, which could be used to make a bed, and even a raised tent roof. Say, for example, you wanted to camp, like we were doing. This was perfect as it was a total of five, that being my family and I. 
My parents slept in the back dinette area, and my sister slept in the top tent area. That means I was left with my brother to sleep on boards that go from the dash to the back of the front two seats. I don't think I need to spend hours explaining to you that sleeping on those beds was no fun. Anyways, my brother was on the passenger side and I was on the driver's side. One more detail. My mom had made these really nice curtains for the front windshield and the side windows too. There was just about a two inch gap in the corner of the windshield, which I was facing. As I tossed and turned, I got this really bad feeling, like someone had been watching me. Earlier that day, there was this really creepy guy in the shower house that tried talking to us. I mentioned this information because when I opened my eyes, I saw the eyeball of someone peeking through the window. It was the same man. To this day, I'm sure I scared him as much as he scared me. After all, who expects to see some random creep looking at you from outside a window, especially in the middle of the night? I let out a sudden scream, which woke up my entire family, who weren't exactly too happy. They told me it was most likely a dream, essentially writing off what I had seen firsthand. Well, the next morning, there were muddy footprints on the bumper on my side of the camper. Let's just say, my family believed me, and we left that same exact day. Not everyone is trying to get you. A friend and I decided to go to the Valley Field Days in Syracuse, New York. We were hanging out from around 8pm to 11pm as the park closes at 12. As we left, we went over a bridge so that we could go under it to have a quick smoke. After we're done, we walked up to the fence that we crawled through, and here was when we noticed a man in a blue Nike sweatshirt as his back is toward me. The odd man stopped in place, and he started stretching his arms and feet. For whatever reason, I couldn't shake off these really bad feelings. I guess being in a pretty shady part of the city further adds to these concerns of mine. As I pass the man, I look back for a brief moment, and I can see he has taken out a phone, and it looks as if he's speaking with someone. We were walking in the middle of a road, and I can recall whispering to my buddy, asking him if he was aware we were being followed. The dude was stoned out of his mind, thus I don't think he really cared. As for myself, I didn't want to take any chances. The last thing I needed was this guy coming up to me with a knife. I put my hand into my pocket, and I reached for my little baton I got for my birthday. When I look back for a second time, the man is just four feet away from me. It sort of looked like when someone loses something, and that other person is trying to return said item back to you. However, it really looks as if he's either trying to mug us, or do something worse. When he got close enough, a car drove past us, and this is what made him keep walking. Before that, I had told the man, Hey dude, is there some sort of problem? Not everyone around here is trying to get you, you know, the man says in a very suspicious tone. This made absolutely no sense whatsoever, but perhaps what really got to me is that when he kept walking, he went into someone's lawn and disappeared behind that house. I truly believe that to this day, this man had some bad motives. If it wasn't for that vehicle slowly driving by my friend and I, I don't know what might have happened. Where did the rocks come from? Here is a pretty intriguing, scary story from a subscriber. They were never able to come up with an explanation, so perhaps one of you might be able to. Here it is. A short time ago, my brother, my dad, and myself were planning on taking a fishing trip. We were looking for catfish, and anyone who knows just a little bit about this activity knows the best time to catch them is in the evening. It's considering catfish are nocturnal creatures. Since our plan was to head to a reservoir, we weren't able to take a boat as originally planned. That means we were fishing from the shore. A few hours before we were set to fish, me and my dad had gone to the area to do some scouting for a nice spot. We located a point that came out into the water. It took us about 10 minutes of walking through the woods before we got to the end of it. The trees sort of made a barrier which was going to make it quite the challenge to get a line in the water. That's why we came up with the plan of sawing some of the trees out of our way. This made a perfect spot to place our chairs, as well as our coolers of food and drinks. 
Fast forward about an hour and a half later, and we're now ready to go out and begin fishing. We brought along three rods, a lantern, and some chicken livers and worms for bait, since we know how much catfish enjoy those sorts of things. Oh yeah, and we also had brought along two flashlights and a saw. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't that just a bit excessive? Maybe, but I shall let you all know our plan was to stay until about 2 in the morning. When we got there, we were able to get the stuff out all in one trip. Then we set up our chairs, lit the lantern, and set up the poles. We were watching for a bite when we heard this huge splash. That had to have been a huge fish, don't you think? We unanimously agreed. Moments later, there's another huge splash, and now we thought there's a school of them. You should have seen the smiles on our faces. All these fish sounded like big boys. We proceeded to silence our voices and movement, and we waited for another splash. Here's when we noticed something that didn't sound like a fish jumping out of water. The sound I can best describe is what you get when you throw a rock at the water. These rock throws continued, and my brother is starting to get a bit worried. I couldn't blame him, as it continued. My dad was getting angry, because he thought another fisherman was trying to mess with us. Rocks are continuing to be thrown every minute or two, and we're starting to get scared that one of us is going to get hit with these rocks. The last thing we needed was a trip to the hospital, and stitches. The weird part was that there was no noise of someone throwing or picking up a rock, just the sound of my brother talking about his concerns. Then a rock flies and falls roughly five feet in front of the shoreline. My brother went crazy. Whoever was throwing these rocks was on the point hiding somewhere around us, since the nearest shoreline was at least 200 yards away. My brother convinced my dad it was time to leave, so we packed up our things right there and then, as rocks continued to be thrown. Yeah, we're going, my dad said in frustration. Thankfully, we made it safely back home, but we haven't told our mother. I'd say the most frightening part of this whole thing was how close this person had to have been, since those rocks were huge, and no matter how close we listened or where we shined the flashlights, we never heard or saw anyone. <laughs>